The color expression property can also take advantage of additional color. Let's look in the color expression panel, and we'll select the smooth palette knife. One thing to keep in mind is you can use either color expression or color variability, but you cannot use both at the same time. So you'll want to make sure that if you're enabling color expression, you've removed any color variability by setting all the values to zero. Color expression color jitter controls the amount of variation between the main and additional colors in a stroke. I'll choose a green and an orange color, then I'll add 100% color jitter. When I paint a stroke, you can see my brush dab alternates between the two colors randomly, sometimes mixing the colors to create brown. If I begin to increase the smoothness to 60%, the transition between orange and green will happen more slowly over the course of the stroke, creating more contrast between the colors. At 100% smoothness, the colors create a gradient effect. I'll change my additional color to a blue. Now we can create strokes that go from green to blue. As the name of this property implies, we can also control the color variation using an expression like pen pressure or pen tilt. Let's select my scratchboard CE brush found in the effects AR category, and I'll choose yellow for the main color and blue for the additional color. Then I'll toggle back to yellow so that's active as the main color and I'll make sure to paint on a blank layer. The expression for this brush is set to pressure, so I can draw with my lightest pressure to get blue, but when I use maximum pressure, I get yellow. Medium pressure gives me gray, which is what happens when you evenly mix blue and yellow in additive color space. Brush size is also linked to the pressure expression, so the blue lines are thin and the yellow lines are thick. You can also invert the expression to swap the main and additional colors. There are other color expressions that you can experiment with, but pen pressure is the most practical way to interact with this feature. You can also get transparency effects from color expressions by using composite methods. I'll load the paint layering template to paint on. I'll add a new layer and set it to the multiply composite method. I'll set the color expression to pressure. Then I'll select black for my main color and white for my additional color. When I paint with heavy pressure, my line is black and fully opaque, but when I begin to use light pressure, the stroke gradually fades to white, creating transparency. This is because the multiply composite method converts white to transparency, and lighter color pixels become semi-opaque. If I change the composite method back to default, now you can see the transparency has been converted back to an opaque white that covers the underlying layers. If I were to change the layer to screen, then black would become transparent. I can also disable the pressure expression and add color jitter to make each dab vary in color. This gives me a unique effect. Color expression properties can be permanently applied to a brush by saving a copy of the brush variant or by saving a brush look. I'll switch back to my blank canvas. Now let's see what color variability can do. Like color expression, this is a property that can augment the color of your brush media. Remember, you can only use either color variability or color expression, but not both at the same time. You may need to disable color expression by removing all of the property values. In the top of the color variability panel is a menu that defines the mode that your color changes will be based upon. The modes are in HSV, in RGB, from gradient, or from color set. HSV is the one I use the most, so we will be focusing on that. HSV varies the color by changing the hue, saturation, and value. I'll demonstrate with the smooth fill brush, and I'll make sure to reset it. I'll select indigo for my main color, and paint several strokes. As you might expect, I get strokes of indigo. Now I will go to color variability and increase the H value, which is for hue, to 5%. I'll draw a few lines that overlap. If you look closely, you may be able to see that there's a very slight difference between the color of the lines. Let's increase the hue variability to around 11%. And now if I make some strokes, you can start to see the range of colors expanding to include purple and cyan. I'll increase the hue variability more to 22%. Now the color is starting to creep into aqua and magenta. If I increase the hue variability all the way to 50%, it's going to pull colors from the entire hue spectrum. 
you'll notice these sliders end at 50%. In the case of the hue, this percentage represents the distance traveled along the hue ring. 100% would be going from indigo all the way back to the starting point. 50% would be going half of that distance around the hue ring to yellow. But because the color variation works bi-directionally, the color target swings both ways like a pendulum, and therefore a value of 50% covers 100% of the spectrum. If you only wanted to draw colors from half of the hue ring, from magenta to aqua, then you would set the value to 25%. Now if I draw some strokes, you can see that it's not ever going to select that yellow or red. I'll remove any hue variability, and now let's play with the S for color saturation. The saturation is on the horizontal axis of the color triangle. I'll select a middle blue value that is fully saturated. We'll make a few marks with the S variability at 0% for reference. I'll increase saturation to about 20%, and when I draw some strokes, you'll start to see a difference in the saturation. Some of the strokes are duller, and some are more vibrant. The more I increase the saturation slider, the more the saturation will vary. Like the hue, the saturation is bidirectional, which means that it will add and remove saturation based on the starting point of the slider. The contrast is at its greatest when you start with a mid-range saturation. Let's go ahead and turn the saturation back down to zero, and let's play with the V slider, which controls the amount of value variability. I'll continue using the middle blue color, and paint some reference marks. I'll increase V to about 20%, and I'll paint some more strokes. You can see the value or the brightness of the strokes is varying bidirectionally. If we vary the hue, saturation, and value together, you can see that I'm getting a wide range of colors. While it can be fun to make a brush that creates random colors like this, it's not very practical. Subtle changes in color tend to be more useful, so keep color variability on the lower end especially the hue, because the rainbow effect can take over pretty quickly. If I set the sliders around 3%, the variation is much more subtle and natural. This can be useful to add some life to your paint so it's not all one flat color. This does wonders to help your medium look less digital.